I think people just kind of make up what religion they want to be and who their God is. I mean, I've heard that before of, oh, well, my God wouldn't do this or my Jesus doesn't act that way. Well, in that case, then you are just building a false idol, a false God in your mind and naming him Jesus. So we need to really understand the true God, because when we start understanding that, we're going to start understanding his goodness, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, and every other aspect. And at that point, we're going to really be able to have a relationship with him. Because if we don't know who God is, how can we really have a relationship with him? And that goes for anybody. If you don't know a person, you can't have a relationship with them, at least not a good one. Hey, faithful listener, grab your cup of coffee and experience the Bible in a way you never have before. P40 Ministries is a podcast that goes through the Bible cover to cover. It's an awesome narrative that focuses your mind and prepares your heart for God to speak. So join your host, Jen, for a biblical podcast that's hilarious, informative, imaginative, and fun. The P40 Ministries Podcast. Listen now as we go through the book of Leviticus. Hello and good morning, friends and faithful listeners. Thanks for tuning in on this lovely Friday morning. I am just so thankful for the way the weather's been recently. I know this weather is short-lived, and I think it's supposed to get cold again tomorrow where I live, which is kind of unfortunate. But I have been in the mood to spring clean because of it. (laughs) So my house looks pretty good right now because I'm actually cleaning it for a change. (laughs) But you know what? I actually have an exciting... Well, personal exciting announcement. Okay, so I have been terrified of water basically for the entirety of my life. So I was always a terrible swimmer. I could doggy paddle, but I never wanted to put my face under the water and I never liked water. So finally, I was mentioning this to a guy that goes to my church and his wife as well. And he was like, Jen, I used to be like a swimming teacher. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, I'd be happy to teach you how to swim on Saturdays. And I was like, what? Are you kidding? So now after several weeks (laughs) of swimming pretty consistently, I am now able to put my face under the water without freaking out. So that is a huge, huge step for me and a huge hurdle that I was able to overcome recently. And I'm very excited about that. And so, yeah, I've been swimming recently and I even am starting to enjoy it to the point where I'm actually going alone now. (laughs) I'm swimming alone. Well, with a lifeguard. But yeah, I'm swimming alone, basically. And that is as huge for me because this was something I have been horrified of for my basically my entire existence. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that has nothing to do with Leviticus 17, just to let you guys know, which is what we're going to be talking about today. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I am going swimming tomorrow and I'm excited about it. So let me know what your guys' hobbies are. So contact me at p40ministries.com slash contact. Let me get to know you guys. I love getting to know all the listeners here. So yeah, tell me what your hobby is. And also, don't forget to continue to do the giveaway. I still only have a couple people who have signed up for it. So do the giveaway. I would love it if you guys did the giveaway and it is there for you guys. This is something that I wanted to do for you guys and I am just very excited to do this giveaway and hopefully you guys are as well because then you can win hopefully some cool stuff so one of the things you're going to win is a lion of judah tea and also a signed copy of my book out of the mire which is a devotional on the life of joseph so those are the two things that you can possibly win when you sign up for the giveaway so do that and the link is in the description of this podcast episode but friends let's talk about leviticus chapter 17 verses 1 through 9 
And we're going to be talking about something kind of interesting here. And this is about not just foreigners, but also about killing animals out in the fields. So let's see what God has to say about this and why he doesn't like this too much. So grab your Bible, whatever version you like, and your cup of coffee or your cup of tea. And I'm going to go ahead and read Leviticus chapter 17, 1 through 9. And as I usually don't, I'm reading out of the NLT version today. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the way the NLT words a few things in this. So that is why I'm reading out of the NLT version or the New Living Translation. But all right, let's go ahead and talk about the Bible. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to Aaron and to his sons and to all the people of Israel. This is what the Lord has commanded. If any native Israelite sacrifices a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside the camp, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle to present it as an offering to the Lord, that person will be as guilty as a murderer. Such a person has shed blood and will be cut off from the community. The purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals in the open fields. It will ensure that they bring their sacrifices to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle so he can present them to the Lord as peace offerings. Then the priest will be able to splatter the blood against the Lord's altar at the entrance of the tabernacle, and he will burn the fat as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The people must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by offering sacrifices to the goat idols. This is a permanent law for them to be observed from generation to generation. Give them this command as well. If any native Israelite or foreigner living among you offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice, but does not bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle to offer it to the Lord, that person will be cut off from the community. The one thing that really got me here is that the NLT version says that a person who offers an animal in the open fields to the Lord will be as guilty as a murderer. And I think the Hebrew goes back and says, we'll be guilty of blood, which we know means that um, guilty of blood literally just kind of means a murderer. And so, yeah, I mean, this is pretty harsh. I mean, God is really stating here that this person who does this, sacrificing an animal in the open fields, is as guilty as a murderer. Now, this is not talking about a person that kills or butchers an animal for eating, because obviously then everybody would be as guilty as murderers, but God did give us animals to eat after the fall. So that's not what this is talking about. This is specifically talking about a person that kills an animal in the open fields for a sacrifice to God. So this is a harsh punishment. And this was to be told to everybody, both a foreigner and to the Israelite people. And God even tells the purpose of the rule. In verse 5, it says that the purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals in the open fields. So here's the thing about sacrificing animals in the open fields. People back in these days, culturally, sacrifice was a very normal thing to do to all the little G gods. People in these days were different than us in the Western culture. They knew that blood had to be shed in order to have forgiveness of sins. Unfortunately, we kind of gloss past that because we are already covered under Jesus's blood. And so we sort of forget that rule that uh, blood has to be shed in order to have forgiveness of sins. But back in these days, even the pagans knew that sacrifices were necessary for forgiveness. This was just common knowledge. And so what would happen was these altars would be erected for whatever God they were worshiping. And then these bloody, terrible kind of sacrifices would happen on these altars and anybody could perform them basically anywhere. This was not only cruel, but God was telling the people that he didn't want them to do this. And if they did, it would be as if they were a murderer because at this point, the people were supposed to differentiate, the Israelite people were supposed to differentiate themselves from the culture at the time. And this was one of the ways that they could do it, was by having a central meeting place to bring the animals to be sacrificed 
by a priest and a priest only. The only person that was supposed to sacrifice these animals were really the priest. The people could bring them, but the priest had to do the dirty work. And the priest was doing the dirty work for the people, if that makes sense. And the priest was supposed to be the one who intercessed for the people. He was the intercessor and uh, helped the people become close to God again. So that was the point of the priest. And God was saying here that not just anybody can go out and kill their sacrifices in the open fields and shed blood. So shedding blood in the open fields with an animal to sacrifice it was wrong because not only was it done probably inhumanely and would have continued to be inhumane because if God did not put this rule in place, can you imagine how many people would just do their own sacrifices and how bad it would get? This was to not only curb, I believe, animal cruelty, but also to bring the people to a centralized location. I want you guys to think about that for nowadays. And we know the verse that says that we are supposed to gather together as Christians, as believers. Church is necessary. And the reason we know that is because God right here is basically commanding his people to go to church. (laughs) I mean, this here, this temple was the Israelites church in a sense. This was their church and God was commanding them to go to church. And so nowadays we are commanded to not forsake the assembly together. And that, of course, is old English to mean we are not supposed to not go to church and stop going completely. That doesn't mean we can't, you know, miss a Sunday or, you know, do something else on occasion. But we are not supposed to just stop going to church. We are supposed to fellowship with other people. We are supposed to fellowship with God, which are the two main reasons church exists. Fellowship, completely 100% fellowship with God and with other people. And I can tell you that at one point in time, I hated church. And it was something I just did to go and check off a box because I believed that was what I was supposed to do. I always knew the verse, do not forsake the assembly together, which I think is the King James version for that verse. And so I'd be like, okay, I have to go to church again this Sunday and this is so miserable, but I have to do this. So I was making church as miserable as possible for myself (laughs) because I would just rush out the door. I wouldn't talk to anybody and I just wanted to get in and out as quickly as I could get in and out. So then I could continue on with my day and do whatever I wanted on Sundays because Sundays was my day off and I didn't want to spend it at church. But let me just tell you that once I started focusing in on the community aspect of church, My life became a lot, 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 lot happier. And I'm not even exaggerating on that. And I know I've been telling my testimony a lot over these past couple days. But in my experience, this is truly what I went through. I became a much happier person once I really started fellowshipping with other people. I became so much more happy. And I actually started liking church. And I've never liked church church before. It wasn't until 2020 that I actually started liking church. And that was only two years ago. Uh, Yeah. And I started this podcast in 2020 as well. And I started, but I started loving church. I actually wanted to go. I wanted to meet with my friends. I made friends at church. It brings me fulfillment and it brings me enjoyment. And I want to do those things. And so I think that There's many reasons why God put this rule into place. I think the first one was to show the other nations that the Israelites were different, that the Israeli nation was different. They had a centralized location where they went to church and sacrificed there. The second one was to curb animal cruelty and so that people aren't just doing whatever they want to their animals out in the open field. The third one was to show the people that they needed this community aspect of the temple, of church. But the point is here, in Leviticus chapter 17, this first part, God was teaching his people how to live the way that was best for them. 
I think we kind of forget that sometimes about God is that he really does have our best interests in heart. And even though we look at this rule now and we think it's kind of weird, it really did have a very simplistic point was to bring his people together in fellowship with him and with each other. But continuing on in verse five, it says, you know, this is going to ensure that the people bring their sacrifices to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle so he can present them to the Lord as peace offerings, because that was the best. That was the correct way to do it. God had put that rule in place that the priest was supposed to do it. And God would then accept these offerings, these peace offerings to God. But he was not going to accept them if the people just did them themselves, however they wanted to do it. That's another thing that I think we can take from nowadays is we can't just worship God however we want to. And I think I've said that a handful of times before. And I think nowadays, you know, this is so prevalent and even a hot button topic. I think people just kind of make up what religion they want to be and who their God is. I mean, I've heard that before of, oh, well, my God wouldn't do this or my Jesus doesn't act that way. Well, In that case, then you are just building a false idol, a false God in your mind and naming him Jesus. So we need to really understand the true God. We need to understand what God is really saying. Because when we start understanding that, we're going to start understanding his goodness, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, and every other aspect. And at that point, We're going to really be able to have a relationship with him. Because if we don't know who God is, how can we really have a relationship with him? And that goes for anybody. If you don't know a person, you can't have a relationship with them, at least not a good one. And the same goes for God. To end my point, I really do think that it's important to do things the way God says that they should be done, because God really does know the best. (laughs) He knows the best, even though... We don't like to admit that sometimes, including myself. (laughs) But to continue on in verse six, it says uh, the priest will be able to splatter the blood against the Lord's altar and burn the fat as the pleasing aroma to the Lord. And so then in verse seven, it says the people must no longer be unfaithful to the Lord by offering sacrifices to the goat idols. And if you go back to the Hebrew on that one, it actually says the goat demons. So God is saying here that What people from other countries are worshiping in this time period are actually demons. Even though it looks like a goat, it's actually a demon. And there's other times that God says that as well, that any other idol other than him is actually a demon. And we're worshiping demons at that point, which to me makes total sense because, I mean, what did we just talk about yesterday? We talked about Jesus being tempted and how Satan wanted Jesus to bow down and worship him. And so Jesus was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to worship you because I shouldn't worship anybody except God. And that's from Deuteronomy. You shall worship no one except for God is what uh, Deuteronomy 6 says, I believe. And so Satan wants our worship. So anything contrary to God that we are worshiping is actually of the devil. And even in James, I mentioned this yesterday as well, even in the book of James, It says that selfish ambition is from the evil one. So even when we're worshiping self, that is from the evil one. And he wants that. He wants us to worship things contrary to God, because obviously he wants the worship. So when we're worshiping things contrary to God, whether it's self, whether it's work, whether it's who knows what it is, it is something from the evil one. And that was what it says here. I mean, God says that the people at this time period were worshiping goat demons. The NLT says idols. Other versions translates it as demons. And so then God says this is going to be a permanent law for them to be observed from generation to generation, that they need to have these sacrifices that they want to bring to God be brought to the priest, be brought the right way. And then verse eight to conclude says that anybody who does not follow this commandment was to be cut off from the community. And it didn't matter if this was an Israelite or a foreigner living with the Israelite people. And I believe this is talking specifically to the foreigners that were um, 
following Jewish law is that if they or any other member of the community, Israelite community, did this, they were to be cut off from the community. And I don't know if that means permanently cut off or not. I don't know. I know God does offer forgiveness, but that was the punishment for this crime. This sin was to be cut off from the community. So this sin had harsh consequences and it was meant for all people that followed the Jewish law, including the foreigners. One thing I said yesterday is that um, we're moving into this entire chapter is kind of talking about a little bit about foreigners as well. So God is including anybody that wants to assimilate into Jewish culture, that these laws are also for them. They can follow these laws. It doesn't matter about their race, their heritage, anything else. If they want to become Jewish and start following these Jewish laws, then they can. And the same thing goes for Christians nowadays. Anybody can come to God. It doesn't matter their race. It doesn't matter their background. It doesn't matter what they struggled with in the past. They can come to God. And God has been very consistent with that from the very beginning, that he wants all people to come to him. So guys, today we talked about this weird law about um, <laughs> sacrificing the animals in the, uh, in the fields and why that was so wrong and how these people would be considered murderers if they did that. And we talked also about the importance of community. We talked about the importance of following God the correct way. And we talked about how God just loves so many people that he wants them all to come to him. So that was a little overview of today. But you know, friends, join on Monday to discuss more of Leviticus chapter 17. And we're moving into um, this next part, which is going to be talking about eating and drinking blood. So yeah, that'll be interesting to talk about that. That'll be fun. But yeah, so we're going to talk about that on Monday. So join in 6 a.m. or whenever you wake up for that. But you know what, guys? Just have a really good weekend. I want you guys to uh, enjoy yourselves, enjoy the weather if it's nice for you, and uh, still contact me about um, what your favorite hobby is and what you're going to do this weekend. Friends and faithful listeners, happy listening, and God bless. Thank you.